the Pure Camping Yoga Centre. In this session we're going to be looking at posture and we're going to look at some practices to help you improve your posture. Also looking at the neck and the shoulders in particular. Poor posture over time can literally throw the body off balance and throw the body out of shape. So the first thing is to check how you stand yourself. And it could be helpful to have somebody to uh, help you with this, to have a look and see. For me, if you look at me from the side, you'll see that the ankles should be in line with the knees, in line with the shoulders, in line with the ears, and the top of the head lengthening up towards the ceiling. So that's just a guide. You could imagine that there was a, you know, there's this plumb line from top down to the ankle this long line. <clears throat> we tend to throw the heads forward a little bit. We tend to always throw the hips forward a little bit without even noticing it. So this can put huge pressure on the back of the neck and also on the lower back. Sometimes it's because the abdominal muscles aren't very strong. Sometimes it's because the lower back muscles are weak. And over time this can create lower back pain and also neck pain. So the first practice is just to warm up the shoulders a little bit. So you're going to be rolling your shoulders forward and up and back and down. Now make these small little movements if you feel that it's creating discomfort or irritation. and the other direction. So you literally feel the muscles warming up the more you do it, and that's good. Okay. And then to open up the chest a little bit, you start by turning your palms to face forward, and what that does is, as your palms face forward, you roll your shoulders back. This whole space here opens up so from the breastbone out to the tip of the shoulder because these muscles shorten again through bad posture over time. So you're opening up that space and you're exaggerating it and then you're releasing and then you're opening again and you feel it in your shoulder blades. Your shoulder blades you'll feel them being pulled back and drawn down. And add your breath to it. When you add your breath to the movement, then it becomes yoga. Inhaling, opening. Exhaling, closing. Inhaling, opening. Exhaling, closing. Now we didn't talk about the feet. So as you're standing here, do feel that the, that the weight is evenly distributed across the feet. You're not digging the toes in. The arches are lifting a little bit. Okay, and again, if the arches don't lift, if your feet are kind of flattened a little, it can start to bring the knees in, it can give you trouble with the knees and the hips. So do work on the feet in yoga when you stand. Activate the feet as you stand. Okay. The next practice is for the, for the shoulders. So what you're going to do is you're going to stretch the arms forward. And you bring your fingertips to your shoulders. Now, the elbows might drop. Keep the elbows up in line with the shoulder if you can. Inhaling, stretching the arms forward, stretching to the fingertips. Try not to draw the shoulders up. You're dropping the shoulders down. Fingertips to the shoulders. Inhaling, lengthening. Exhaling, closing. Inhaling, lengthening and exhaling, closing. Keep your fingertips on your shoulders now. Take the elbows out to the sides. And again, the tendency sometimes is the shoulders come up, drop the shoulders, elbows, shoulder height if you can manage it. Take your arms out to the sides. Stretch into the fingertips. Feel that again on the shoulder blades. So the weight of your arms is providing, <clears throat> it's, it's uh, providing strength. It's creating strength in the shoulders. Fingertips to the shoulders, inhaling, opening, exhaling, closing. Now, for the rotation, bring the elbows towards each other, up towards the ceiling, 
back and down. Now, particularly if you have trouble with your shoulders, you might find this very challenging. So what you do then is you just make the movements smaller and you build it up each day or every second day you build it up. So small movements to start and then when you're ready you can make those circles bigger. And when those shoulders come back and you're drawing the elbows down, feel that you're really drawing the shoulder blades down. So forward and up and back and down. And what this is doing and how this is helping posture is it's strengthening the muscles underneath the shoulder blades so they're able to support the whole shoulder girdle and then you release the arms. So when you strengthen underneath the shoulder blades and when you open this space here, you're now correcting the posture around the shoulders and the upper part of the body. <clears throat> the next practice is for the upper body still, but it's, it's a spinal twist, okay? So you can begin to just take your arms out to the sides and you're going to be turning and twisting. So one hand comes on the back of one shoulder and the other hand is just on the lower back or a little beyond. Arms come out to the sides and then you turn and twist. Now it can be, make it a bit more comfortable, feet a little bit wider apart. Same thing again, turning and twisting. And bring the breath into it. Make it into yoga. Exhaling as you turn. Inhaling, coming back. Exhaling, turning. You could speed this up then if you wanted to make it a more kind of vigorous practice once you've warmed up. All right? And if you do that, you need to keep the knees soft. So the knees aren't twisting. And if you wanted to make it really vigorous and to improve the circulation, you can make it even more dynamic. Clipping the back of the shoulders, clipping the lower back and the kidneys. And then bit by bit by bit, you're slowing it all down. Just be aware of the sensations in the arms and in the hands. <clears throat> Next practice is a side bend. And again, you're trying to bring balance into the body. All right. So with the arms along the side of the body, the feet are wider apart now. And again, check the feet. You want to make sure those arches are lifting a little bit, the toes are nice and soft on the mat. Very simple side movement, you're going to be sliding. I remember earlier we talked about keeping the ankle, the knee, the hip, the shoulder in line. You do the same thing in a side bend. So as you move to one side, you try to keep that alignment. Same with that top arm, keeping that shoulder back over the elbow, over the, over the hip. You're sliding down. And push the hip out a little bit, makes it a bit stronger, it's up to you. <clears throat> You're not leaving the weight all the way down on the leg. If you have to, you know, if you have to use the leg for support, then you've come down too far. So come up a little bit. You want this part of the body to work. You inhale, come back up, and you exhale down the other side. And you're sliding the hands up, so you're almost giving yourself a little massage as you move to one side. Inhaling back up to center, exhaling down the other side. Inhaling back up, and about five rounds in total. One round being that you've been to both sides. Exhaling down. Inhaling back up, exhaling down, and inhaling back up. And as you build up strength, you could stay down on each side for a little bit longer. All right? Okay. And then the last practice is a, is a balance pose. And again, we're trying to improve our pos posture. 
we're trying to stand in such a way that there's this feeling of lightness and extension in all the joints. And with the balance pose, you're trying to improve your physical balance so that, you, that you're more agile. And particularly as we get older, agility is really important. We can get up and down off a seat, we can get up and down off the floor um, with grace and safely. So, the feet are close together. You interlock the fingers, you can place them just on the top of the head. Okay, make sure your neck feels nice and comfortable. So you start to turn the palms of the hands to face up. With balance poses, you need your eyes open. Okay, and you can be looking at something ahead to keep them steady. And as the arms come up, you're also coming up on your tippy toes. And then you bring the hands back down, the heels back down. On an inhalation, you're coming back up again. Exhaling down. And then last time again. Now when you do stretch up, do feel like you're stretching that whole front part of the body, all the abdominal organs are getting a lovely stretch, front of the hips getting a lovely stretch. And if you were to make things a bit stronger, you'd look up. Might make you throw you off balance entirely, but it'll improve over time. And then you come down onto the heels, hand on the head, release the arms and then just stand. So standing so that you're comfortable again, feet hip width apart, arms alongside the body. You're in the position of Tadasana, the standing mountain. You're aware of the contact that the feet have with the ground. You're aware of all those small little movements that the body is making just to keep you upright. You're aware of the whole body lengthening up from the top of the back of the head, up towards the ceiling, up towards the sky. Back of the head is lovely and back of the neck is lovely and long, it takes pressure off the, the bones in the neck. Arms are Alongside the body, you're aware of them. You're aware of the space around this body. The space that surrounds this body. You can close your eyes for a moment if you feel that you, it won't knock you off balance. Just closing your eyes and feeling this body from the inside. Feeling the body from the outside. Om Tat Sat. This practice has come to an end. So, when you're ready, you can open your eyes. You can move the body a little. And you can go about your day.